This is another addition to the ongoing mini series called Log Close to 1000, where I'm documenting the progress of building web apps and startups while teaching the things I learned along the way. Usually they say the best ideas are the ones where you solve your own problems. So the other day, my friend got a couple of furnitures and we had to find someone to put it together. So obviously we went online to hire someone as a furniture builder and we couldn't find any. A few days passed, one of my other friend had to hire an electrician to fix his water heating system in his apartment. And again, we went online to hire an electrician and we couldn't find a platform to do so. We as foreigners in this country, we don't have a go-to platform to hire local service professionals. It seemed so obvious to us that there should be a platform like Craigslist or TaskRabbit or Airtasker in Australia where you could go and hire local service professionals or taskers who could do such jobs as building your furniture or be a shopper, etc. So obviously I had to validate this idea. So I went online uh, to do some digging. I went through Facebook forums online on a couple of websites to see if such a platform already exists. And on Facebook forums, people are consistently, mainly expats, asking for uh, where can I find an electrician? Where can I find a plumber? Where can I find a furniture builder? So that told me such a platform doesn't exist here. And even if it does, it's not doing the job it's supposed to do. So when I did a competition analysis, I found out there are a couple of platforms that already exist here, uh, but they're too specific to a specific group of people. For example, there is a platform here to hire only babysitters. There is a platform here to hire only electricians. And there's also a platform here to hire wholly handymans. So there is a room to do something different here, or at least try to do something different like TaskRabbit uh, or Airtasker. Potentially anyone could sign up as a tasker and do menial jobs like putting furniture together or being a shopper for someone, or even for actual service professionals to sign up as electricians and plumbers and post jobs and freelancers can also post their profiles. So basically bring the task rabbit idea over here. And the biggest advantage would be none of these existing platforms here are very English speaking friendly. So I could be that. So I thought of building this. So over the past one month, I have coded the initial MVP and I've been trying to get the initial users signed up. I already have a couple of users signed up. So in this video, I wanna share my progress and things I learned along the way. And I will talk about my idea, how I did my initial validation, uh, the tech stack I chose, the struggles I'm going through, and at the end, I will walk you through the working MVP of the platform that I have in production now. So the idea essentially is to build a platform like TaskRabbit or Airtasker. So for those who don't know, these platforms are basically an open marketplace which connects two groups of users. One, the customers who wants to outsource their tasks to be done and two, the taskers or freelancers who wants to pick up these tasks. So my idea was essentially to build a working version of uh, TaskRabbit or at least the initial MVP to have all the features of posting a job, signing up as a freelancer, or even if you sign up as a freelancer, still to have the option to post a job because you could be an electrician as a freelancer and still be looking for another freelancer to get something done for you. So regardless of what user group you are, you still have the option to post a task. But if you're signing up as a client, your profile just won't come up on the feed of freelancers. That's the only difference. So the feature to post a job, to sign up as a client or a freelancer, and the ability to contact between each other. So these two were the main features that I wanted to have in the working MVP. So the second thing, how did I do the initial validation? Second, initial validation. 
So this is the phase I call $50 burn test. This is something I learned from Greg Eisenberg or Simon Hoiberg. They both talk about building micro SaaS businesses and startups online. If you're into these kind of content, you should check out their YouTube channel. So the idea here is to basically run a Facebook ad with a budget of $50 to $100, whatever you feel comfortable with, to see if there's any traction or to validate your idea by getting some leads. So I basically ran a leads campaign to get freelancers signed up because because that's the most important thing. If you don't have freelancers on the website, there's no point of having uh, clients because Uber without Uber drivers are nothing. You will be just ordering for a ride and you, no one would show up. So freelancers were the most important thing to get signed up. So I basically ran a campaign and I ended up getting uh, 33 leads with a budget of less than $80. People who signed up were mainly electricians, painters, furniture builders couple of dog walkers. So it gave me some initial validation. So there was some traction for me to uh, invest my time and energy into building this. So if you're in the same boat of thinking whether an idea is worth pursuing, I would 100% recommend to test it out this way. The tech stack. So now I want to talk about the tech stack I chose for this build. I wanted this build to be real quick. I wanted this MVP up and running in less than a month so I could start getting real uses. And I learned my lesson from my previous build when I coded apexplayground.com. I didn't want to have the hassle of uh, maintaining a front end server and a back end server and making API calls and having to deal with these courses and stuff. And for a while, I've been wanting to learn Next.js, which is a full stack framework. So knowing React and Node.js, I felt like this is the right move to pick up Next.js. So I built the entire thing using Next.js, TypeScript, Clerk for authentication, Prisma as an ORM, PostgreSQL for database, Tailwind and ShadCN for UI and Vercel for deployment. Now I want to talk about some of the struggles I've been going through since the MVP has been live. Number one, customer acquisition. Building startups or any business for that matter is not an easy feat. Nowadays, it's so much glorified to be a founder that we keep forgetting the core of any business is customers. If you can't get enough users to sign up on your platform or if you can't get enough customers to come to your business, it doesn't matter what tech stack you used or how pretty your platform looks or how good your website is. If there's no customer, you essentially don't have a business. So one thing I've been struggling with customer acquisition is marketing. One lesson I learned the hard way is that just because some Someone signed up using your initial validation method doesn't mean when the platform is live they're gonna immediately sign up because there's a lot that goes into someone going on to your website and them giving their first name last name email address password or whatever data your platform is asking for mm -hmm. so it requires a lot of work behind it your landing page should be great that it gives you some sort of conversion the best conversion in the online world is two percent that means every hundred visitors you get two people converted so it's not an easy thing to just build something and someone's gonna come and sign up the second struggle that i've been going through is localization so obviously i'm starting small and i'm starting focused on czech republic as a market so all my ad copy my website everything has to support czech as a language with uh, English. So whenever I'm putting out an advertisement or campaign, I have to make sure all my ad copy translates well because some of the things that you say in English does not fully translate well into another language. Czech, of course, is not my native language. Even though I'm learning the language, I'm not fluent in it. So I make some mistakes uh, when I try to translate them using Google Translate or even ChatGPT. And since I am focused on localizing my application, one caveat is that I cannot ask my online community, even if you're watching this, to go ahead and sign up because this is not a service for everyone on online. This is only for people who are in the Czech Republic. So if you happen to be in the Czech Republic and wants to find freelance jobs, or you're a client who could potentially hire one of them, go ahead and sign up on the platform. I will leave a link in the description. So now I wanna jump into my computer here and show you the working version of my uh, app. So this is my landing page where you land if you go into the website non-remote.io. 
uh, I basically came up with the name because uh, I thought Upwork and Fiverr is for remote workers, mainly digital services like uh, developers, um, designers, people who can get stuff done uh, in a remote fashion. They don't necessarily have to be in your location if you want to hire someone on Upwork or Fiverr. But this platform is mainly for uh, uh, non-remote workers, meaning if you want to hire an electrician or plumber, they have to be available locally. Non-remote means they have to be uh, in your location. So I just came up with the name non-remote. This is not a final name or anything. This is up for debate in case SEO and marketing says otherwise. But I didn't want to spend too much time thinking about, oh, I need to come up with the perfect name. Uh, I would recommend you to do the same if you're in the similar boat. Just uh, get a domain, put your uh, uh, MVP online, get it live. Once you have a couple of users and things going on, you can later think about coming up with a better name. So this is my landing page uh, here. You have two CTAs, call to action, post a job for free. And also here on the nav bar, I have uh, two CTAs, a call to action to post a job or become a freelancer. So if you press become a freelancer, it's going to ask you to create an account. Posting a job is something you can already do without creating a profile, meaning you could fill in all the stuff. And by the end, when you need to uh, post it, you need to sign in. So I have those hooked up. I'm going to show you two uh, workflows here. One of them is user onboarding, how a new user comes up and signs up uh, as a freelancer. And the other flow is if your profile type is of client and how you can post a job. So if you scroll further down, I have some ad copy here to be your own boss, only as earn money as a freelancer. So these are all the features that I'm offering, free access to thousands of jobs. Job market, there's no subscription or credit card fees at the moment. It's completely free to sign up, even completely free to sign up and contact a freelancer or even post a job. You can also post a job in a couple of seconds. And these are the categories that I'm offering at the moment, home services, repair and installation events, transport, delivery, health, wellness, education, training. And I have how it works section here and a couple of uh, FAQ questions as well. So let me show you the onboarding process. Uh, I already have a profile signed up. So I'm just going to sign log in and see uh, what profile that is first. So I have two options to sign up one using Google method, Facebook, or just use your email address and password. Um, so I'm going to sign up using my email here. Once it takes me into the platform, once I sign in, it's going to, I'm going to land over here. Uh, this is the apps face once you sign in. So you have two tabs here, one for freelancers. So if you sign up as a freelancer, your profile would show up here. These are a couple of the freelancers that already signed up. Uh, some uh, CEO, coach, consultant, some pet sitter, dog walker, some handyman. Uh, these are people, these two were people that came through my ads. Some mechanical engineer, a couple of these are my friends actually. Uh, and over here on the second section, you have jobs that you post your job. Uh, if you post a job, that would appear here. Or if you sign up as a freelancer, it would appear here. So even if you sign up as a freelancer like I said in the beginning you could still post a job so uh, let me check what my profile type is here so over here so uh, this is a oh, I just gave my last name as client so I could understand so the, this profile type is client uh, I could obviously update my profile so this is a client so let's just say I am an actual client and I'm gonna post a job right so you're posting a job or, or a task looking for a painter so let's do the same looking for a painter i'm looking for Prague. obviously this is what i said i am only focusing on getting users from uh, czech republic at the moment so all the cities available here are in the czech republic so i have Prague. i'm gonna set a budget of uh, five thousand crowns czech crowns is a currency here so five thousand crowns is like uh, 200 something uh, dollars 210 dollars us dollars 200 euros um and you can choose a category if it's repair, home care assistance, home services. So I would say this is home care assistance because I'm looking for a painter. Uh, you can also optionally upload an image. Uh, so I'm just going to upload an image that I have here. So I have a painter image, so I'm going to upload that and I'll put a description. I'm going to copy this and say looking for a painter, looking for a painter. Uh, look. Let me just type something real here. Looking for a painter to paint uh, one of my living room wall. Uh, I think it is about um, 50 centimeters square. So 
something random. So I'm gonna pause this job and see what happens. So I have a little animation here that says it's submitting. So it's submitted, it took me back to the page. So if you come here, you can see the job is already visible here. Looking for a painter uh, and I'm, a, I'm signed in as a client, right? So this is, this is a posting that I did, so I do have the option to delete it. But uh, uh, if, if, if you were a second or third user, you, you won't be able to delete this. You would instead have an option to contact. So this is my job posting, looking for a painter, posted by Asla, someone who joined this month. So if you, I go into another posting here, let's say, um, so I have the option to apply, right? So if I press apply, it would just open up my default email app here, which I don't want to show at the moment. So this is essentially it. If you're a client, it's a working MVP. You can post a job, you can browse freelancers. So if you want to contact someone, um, you could go into a freelancer. You have the option to contact. If you contact, it goes into an email. I don't have any Stripe integration, any payment, none of those hooked up because at this moment I am purely focusing on getting the users signed up. Once the users are signed up or once I have some sort of um, steady flow of leads, I would think about how to uh, hook up payments. I already know how to hook up payments, but I just want to think about how to monetize the platform, right? Probably I'll go with the with the commission-based structure, but at the moment, I'm not thinking about how to make money. I'm thinking about how to get users. So, and also you also have the filter here. You can filter by category. So this is a client profile. Now I want to show you the other workflow, how you would sign up as a freelancer. So I'm going to sign out. So once I sign up, it's going to take me back to the landing page. I'm going to say become a freelancer or money, earn money as a freelancer, right? So I'm going to take the Google way again because that's the most easiest. I'm going to sign up using one of my second emails. Um, so signed up. The moment you sign up, uh, it's going to bring you to this create profile page where you have the option to either sign up as a client or a freelancer which makes sense, I think. Uh, I'm gonna name YouTube. I'm just gonna put some number here, so it should be minimum nine digits because it's in Czech Republic. Three, 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 three. So let's say Prague, what languages do I speak? I speak, uh, let me say English, and I'm signing up. Uh, you have two options here. You're either signing up as a client, hiring for a project, or you're a freelancer looking for a job. The moment you choose you're a freelancer, you have, the, you have to fill in a couple more information. What kind of category you're providing your service in. Uh, let's say I'm gonna sign up as an electrician. So repair and installation. I'm gonna say my title is an electrician. Uh, I have a few other things. I have an electrician. I work on multiple international clients. Currently have 50, 50 clients. Something, something of that uh, effect here. So experience, I have some typo. So I'm gonna create a profile. So this is basically the user onboarding. So since I'm signing up as a freelancer, you can see immediately my profile came up here because uh, uh, if you're signing up as a client, your profile won't be on the freelancer feed. So that's the only differentiation. So even if I'm signed up as a freelancer, you can see I still have the option to post a job, which do make sense because even if I'm a freelancer, I should I still have the option to post a job to hire someone, right? So this is my freelancer profile. Uh, I could come here. I still have the contact me option. I just found, found out that I should probably have a delete option. So that's pretty much it. You could either sign up as a freelancer or you could sign up as a client. You could post a job. You could uh, you could hire someone, contact someone. So working MVP, it has every feature that a MVP should have for such a platform. I believe so. So my plan for this mini series localhost 1000 has been to share my progress and learnings of building web apps and online startups. And I want to document the process of me going from making zero dollars to hundred dollars and beyond hopefully and i hope you guys get inspired to do something similar or maybe replicate some of the things i've been doing and i also share my progress of building these apps on twitter and instagram so follow me over there and go check out this playlist where i'm building uh, apexplayground.com one of the first app i built in this series and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and if you have been thanks for watching